Hey there YouTube. It has been a little while since I have sent you guys another video of uh, some Cisco certification stuff. Uh, I've been a little busy studying for my NP switch. Uh, hopefully I'll be taking that in the next uh, week or two. Um, one of the simulations I feel to be one of the more difficult ones is the uh, .1x authentication. Um, what is .1x authentication? It's basically just another fancy name for port-based authentication, uh, which means that any user that plugs into a switch, uh, that port is going to authenticate through a radius server and ask that person for a username and password. Uh, it's a little, little bit more secure than using like group policy uh, on a Windows server where it would just restrict a user from being able to get into a a uh, certain folder or something on the server, this will actually keep them out of the complete network if they uh, don't have a username and password for that. So, this here in the Word document is pretty much what you would see on a Cisco exam. Maybe a little bit different, the IP addresses may change, VLANs may be a little bit different, whatever, it's, it's all the same. Just keep an eye on what VLANs and IP addresses and stuff you're given. So, in a nutshell, basically you have uh, small network, you have two switches, one being a distribution layer switch, the other being an access layer switch. Uh, VLAN 40 is new VLAN we use to provide the shipping personnel access to the server. For security reasons, it's necessary to restrict access to VLAN 20 in the following manner. Uh, users connecting to the access layer switch need to authenticate before they're given access to the network. Authentication is to be done via a radius server. Here's your radius server IP address and the key for it. Uh, authentication should be implemented as close to the host device as possible. Devices on VLAN 20 are restricted to the IP address network 172.120.40.0 slash 24 and is saying that that network should be passed on VLAN 20. And the other address range should be dropped on VLAN 20. Filtering should be implemented as close to the server as possible, which is going to be on our distribution layer switch. And the fun part of it, radius server and application servers to be installed at a future date. So that means with all your hard earned efforts, you don't know if it works. So thank you Cisco for that. So let's get started. Since we pretty much know the, our key factors here, we need to do port-based authentication. Here's our server host, our key. This is the address we need to let through. Drop everything else, and it's going to filter through on VLAN 20. So, what we're going to do is start out on our access layer switch. First thing we need to do is do a AAA new model. And we need to go through and allow the dot one X. Uh, put in dot one X as the default. So AAA authentication. And it should give us our options. We have dot one X. We want that to be the default group. And we have options of server group name, radius, or attack X. Radius is the only thing that works. So we put in radius. Now the next thing we need to do is tell the access switch where our radius server is. Host and IP address is 172.120.39.46 and it will ask, also ask us for the key right here which we have as rad one, two, three. Now that knows our radius server host, the key, we have our AAA set up. Now we need to globally enable dot one X on this switch, which is pretty easy. Dot one X, as you see there, enable or disable system auth control. We're going to enable it. Now, what we need to do is we need to set up one of the ports to authenticate through the radius server. 
uh, the graphs that you're given. It'll probably show like FA01 or something. So we'll just do FA01 on here as an example. Push port mode access. We don't need to assign it to a VLAN because it did not ask us to. And it's also going to authenticate through the radius server. So, next thing we need to do is enable .1x on this port. .1x, we have we'll port control. We have three options of either auto, force authorize, or force unauthorized. We want to do auto because we want to automatically authenticate through the radius server to ask our user for a username and password. Now if we do a force authorize, it's just going to push it through, not really going to authenticate or ask. Unauthorized, again, it won't ask, but it will pretty much just shut it down and won't let anyone through versus allowing everyone through. So we'll do an auto. And that is all we need to do with this switch. I'm going to do exit out. Typically, you would do a copy run to start. Uh, so it saves your config. Uh, with this being on my lab, I'm going to reboot this thing multiple times, so I'm not going to worry about it. But for your exam, always write your configs. Now the next thing we need to do is go over to our distribution layer switch. And because I am tied in through a console server, I'm just going to jump over to it. Actually, I'm telnetting, but my console server has been kind of janky. I can't just uh, exit straight out and then jump into another one through the console. So I'm going to telnet. Um, there we go. Okay. So now here comes the fun part. The earlier stuff on the access switch is pretty easy, so it's just you know, three or four simple steps. Now the fun part is we need to apply a access list. We need to be able to permit that access list into the VLANs and be able to drop everything else. So first step, we need to create an access list for our users that are allowed through to 172.120.40.0 network. It's just going to be a standard access list because you're not doing a source of destination, you're just permitting this uh, network. We'll just name it 10. We're going to do permit 172.120.40.0. I remember these are wildcards, so you need to do the opposite. 0.0.0.255 and there's our access list. We'll exit out. Now what we need to do is apply this access list into a VLAN access map. And let's give it a name. Uh, let's just go with access map. Start with line 10. And here's where it gets a little tricky and a little confusing. You may wonder, you know, why can't you just apply the access list directly in and kind of keep everything out? It doesn't exactly work like that. As you can see here, you can't do any access list itself. You have to do an access list and then match that access list. So that's what we're going to do here. Match IP address and it'll ask us for our access list which is going to be this guy up here access list standard 10 so the name of it is 10 there we go now what do we want to do with this access list that we're referring to we simply do that as an action and we have two actions with that. Either we can A, forward it, or B, we can deny it. So, since this is the network that we want to allow through, we're going to forward it. 
then we'll exit out. Now we need to go back in and we need to deny all of the other networks. So we're going to go back in, VLAN access map. Remember to call in the same one. So access map. And we're going to do line 20. And we're not going to refer to any specific network on this. We're going to allow it to do an implicit deny. So we're just going to do action drop. Now we'll exit out. So you can kind of see this whole statement filled together now. You have your access list, and then you're forwarding, doing an action forward on an access list that you're referring to. So that is allowed through, and then everything else drops. So now, our last step is we need to apply this to VLAN 20 per the instructions. So we do VLAN, and you have here a VLAN filter, apply a VLAN map. So VLAN filter, and now it acts as for our VLAN map name, which was access map. And then it says VLAN list, VLAN to apply the filter to. And we need to apply it to VLAN 20. And there we go. It is applied to our VLAN 20. So now, anything that goes through VLAN 20 with a 172.120.40.0 slash 24 network will be forwarded. And then anything that is going across VLAN 20 that is not in that network will be dropped. And that's all there is to it. So once you kind of sit back and look, see how your access maps and your VLAN filters and everything kind of work together, it, it definitely makes this a lot easier. So I would recommend you know going through redoing this thing multiple times. I've I've probably done this thing you know, at least two dozen times. Uh, not to mention the five times I did uh, doing this video since my uh, voice wouldn't work. So I guess make that a uh, about 29 times I've done it now. So hopefully this has been beneficial for you all. And please show some love, subscribe up, and comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, if this is beneficial for you or not, what I can do to uh, help you out on it. Um, any other videos you would like me to do, please post up, comment, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace.